but you have to understand that sh- you cannot say that this whole time and you even said this before you cannot say this whole time that you didn't think that she had feelings for him she led him on this whole time if you have feelings for somebody that's not what we're talking no, about the- hey no, everybody no, welcome no, no. to the, <laughs> the series finale of Loki. as you can see the discussion got heated before we even hit start and I'm, I, I, I'm I literally right sat now. here and I said, "Okay, I'm starting stream now because no, she like was getting, she was getting spicy." <laughs> but, but, it's, it's just me. I'm just being honest. Like, that's nothing to do with that. They, it's not about the feeling. It, the ba- this is going to change the, the plans. Hold mean? on, hold on, hold on, hold on. <laughs> the plans changed. That's it. They went in and they were like, "We're gonna kill this guy," right? That's what they said. They were gonna go kill the guy. So they went in, and he basically said, "All right, you kill me. This is what happened." And it's, and right. Sylvie didn't want to think about it. She's like, "No, he's lying," because she doesn't trust anybody. And okay. Loki's hold on, and male Loki was like, "No, let's think about it. Because if we're if we're wrong, we're gonna mess up. That's not betraying. That's literally just says, nah, I'm gonna do what I want, and I, and that's what happened. She made a mistake. And yes, you you literally said exactly." What, what betrayal is, is. is what betrayal nah, is she didn't betray hey, him dude. she only double crossed him dude. she's gonna tell she me what the meaning is. is you it, literally it, just said it, you literally just, just like, said honestly, fuck what fuck what our loki thinks fuck what he thinks it's what about what i think so fuck him and i don't give a shit because and I, they don't know betrayal. she literally she literally was the, like oh, honestly like, it is this dude, like, it is a, a reoccurring meme on these discussions where the series finale brawly just has the worst take i don't <laughs> yeah, hold on wait a minute whoa, whoa, whoa. No, 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 no. hold on yeah it, this hey, is just don't feel like it anymore Winter, no, 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 not like Falcon Winter soldier where i'm gonna go off and say oh this is a two out of ten this game is a, what was the point first of all this is what season was the two. point so i'm not gonna say I this swear to God, that, was, no. that was the best brawly no, that was the best brawly no first of all you that hated the, the ending of wandavision somehow. don't give me that shit you hated the ending of wandavision i so, did dude somehow a screen crush and ryan airy heard you say that and they've specifically screen crush has been putting out videos saying what's the point for every new because there's no point look i'm just gonna say this and then i'll shut up i'm gonna say this and i'll shut up all right because i want a soldier honestly you could have just put it in a movie i'm sorry but that's it there we're not talking about that we are talking yeah, well, about okay so again welcome, with it. welcome yeah, to our, our uh loki finale series finale discussion um what we have slar joining us again oh which is awesome if you guys saw uh the black widow discussion i posted that up uh, a couple days ago and solar was on there and um now Solara's back home and uh he's on his own computer this time but he did stay up and watched it so we got the uh another another voice of reason here <laughs> in this, in yeah, this right, yeah. uh, uh, but yeah, we, so we just finished watching the episode. It is currently 2.48 a.m. Well, we're starting a lot earlier. I guess we just really wanted to get into it or something. But um, but yeah. Well, so, we didn't wait. We saw it right as it came out. Yeah, literally, I think the episode dropped like at 1.50 uh, a.m. So it dropped like 10 minutes earlier than usual, I guess, or something. Um, but yeah, here we are, the end of season one. As we learned, I mean, I, I think it was already confirmed. I think I think we might have mentioned that before, or maybe I read it somewhere online. But it is confirmed in the post credit scene for this show that Season 2, Loki will return. So Loki is getting renewed for Season 2. Um, but, yeah, that was a very heavy, heavy episode. A lot of, lot of talking, a lot of, like discovering and and learning and and wondering about what the hell is gonna happen next but uh who wants to jump in first i I think since this is a series finale and because of how how tremendous like this episode is going to be for the future of the marvel uh, cinematic universe i think this discussion is probably going to be a little bit more chaotic makes sense because loki's are chaotic so you know it works out that way but um we might not be you know talking point to point to point to point because this episode like i said it, we got a big reveal uh and after that reveal happened 
we had a lot of just world building that happened and a lot of exposition. So, uh, who wants to take it first? Um, uh, not, not before you know. This episode was awesome. Um, the whole time I watched this episode, I like. It, it was like I didn't know, like everything, dude. Okay. Can I just say something before I even like give my general yeah, discussion? Right, 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 right. When when this minute popped out, I was like, "Oh, Vash was right." Yeah, yeah I <laughs> like, fucking told you, dude. <laughs> the moment she popped out, I was like, "Vash was right." It's fucking this minute. Like, <laughs> what the fuck? What the fuck? I I, I will um, say my, the the theory that I read yes uh, last last discussion about Mobius being the bad guy. Okay, that one was a little far fetched. But that's why I gave it a huge disclaimer that I was like, I don't really know how this one's going to play out. But I threw it in there just because. But, uh, you know, for once, yeah, we actually like... got, like, you know, a pretty solid, you know, understanding of what the ending was going to play out like. But, yeah, go ahead. Yeah, so um, the the episode was really good. Uh, I liked it a lot. It ended, the, it ended really well. Um, it left a lot of... Uh, questions which I mean obviously since we know that there's going to be a season two that's great uh, because now it leaves us uh, you know with uh, something to sit on before the the next season comes out uh, which I think Loki season two is going to come out before Multiverse of Madness uh -huh. uh, uh, I'm not sure I if I'm right I don't know about that I, I'm looking because I usually I have the timeline up of movies that are coming out next is what if on in august and then september shang chi after that it's venom in september 24th eternals october 28th uh spider-man is uh december 17th and then hawkeye and miss marvel should be coming out late this year but there's no definitive uh look into it and everything okay. else is to be determined we don't have anything uh else planned um I get, well, I think okay. uh, Morbius uh, with Jared Leto, that's in January, and then Doctor Strange is in March. Okay, so there's, there could be a chance that this could come out before Multiverse of Madness. Um, so that, you know, it's... Yeah, because it's going to be in I'm, 2022. Yeah, so it, it already said that it's going to be... Both, feel, both Multiverse of Madness and Loki Season 2 are coming out in the same year. So we don't really know which is gonna come first, which is gonna come after. I feel um, like, honestly, I feel like this is the jump point, and we might get further progression, not from Lo like specifically Loki, but we might get a uh, forward progression in the MCU like world building with the the Spider Man movie. Yeah, and that's yeah. the, that's, yeah, the, end, that's the end of this, this year. This is gonna be the the starting point. This is basically where okay, everything's set in motion. But you gotta remember. Movies and shows are not going to be in chronological order. They're probably going to be like, well, yeah, well, this yeah. is all starting at the same time. Yeah, I mean, and I mean, that was apparent. That's, I mean, that's that's kind of the case sometimes with Marvel movies. They do that um, where, you know, not everything is in chronological order, which is, is totally fine. Um, but uh, the way that this episode ended, uh, it it this episode really leads into a lot of different stuff, um, which I liked a lot. Because it's not just, um, oh, the way this ended, it's only going to lead into the multiverse of madness. Uh, the way this ended is this This is kind of the starting point for a lot of uh, MCU stuff. So uh, I really, really enjoyed that. Um, I didn't feel like uh, this episode was lacking information. Uh, it gave me the right amount of information I needed uh, to kind of be okay with the end of the season. Uh Again, considering that there's going to be a season two and the way Marvel works, you know, uh, this is going to lead into a, a bunch of other movies and stuff like that. So, uh, yeah, overall, this episode was really good. Uh, I liked it. What a really, really great way to end the series. Um, yeah, it was pretty great. Uh, okay, sweet. Uh, so, Laura, you want to jump in and get, kind of give like a little, small little overview? Oh, uh, well... I guess uh, I would just have to say uh, everything's going to shit. <laughs> I'm, man, I, I yeah, there need, there's some questions that I would like to have answered. Like, um, first of all, like, 
what um what oh my god what's her name uh, uh ravona no oh, ravona. i wonder what yeah. she's yeah i wonder what she's up to um because her stuff wasn't entirely too clear to me um i i i mean i could i could answer it kind of sort of give you like a little bit of insight on that maybe not like answered for you but like a, a possibility um but i don't want to i'll 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 talk about it when we get to the end because it definitely it 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 definitely includes the like the big ending reveal so okay, but there's uh, definitely feel what, what, what could happen with her yeah yeah uh wasn't expecting the miss minutes jump scare but you know <laughs> um, yeah that was just kind of fun like I, I i figured something was gonna but like it was just like the she was so bright and red and i was just like oh shit <laughs> oh shit um, yeah, as I said, this, this episode needed to be called old boat uh, oh, oh no, no. <laughs> um I kind of, I kind of want to, like, I mean, the other thing is how Mobius got back, um, because, I, I, man, it's just, I feel like stuff just happened because it just, you know, like, oh, that, that's just it, what it is, you know, it, it made me just be like, okay, I guess I'm just subjecting myself to ditching all reality and just like, all right, that happened because it happened. Um, which kind of sucks because I usually like, even if it's fucking a fake or like a, a like a fictional explanation, like I kind of want an explanation on on why things happen. Like at least like, oh well, um, something something the like uh, maybe what what are those little things called that they that they used to open the portals? Tempad. Yeah, yeah like oh maybe maybe that maybe the pad started working again or, or something. I don't know. I, I, I'm. It's it's not too much of a deal breaker for me, but I still kind of like would at least like an explanation, even if it's a fucking far fetched one. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, I mean, I'm not. I'm, I'm pretty sure that ending had. I mean, we were all waiting for like some sort of uh, ending. Uh, you know, the the usual Marvel post credit scene, which really wasn't one technically, but. Uh, well, yeah, we got that season two confirmation, so <laughs> we're gonna have yeah, to see where it goes. I, um, I think, like honestly, I think that there, there's a lot to yeah. be there's a lot to be discovered for sure. Of course, uh, the the fact that it ended in the way it did with with the uh, the timeline basically branching into uh, this you know unstoppable like you know continuation like it's basically like oh we're branching we're branching and now it's past the point and oh look it's even past what you guys could ever hope to stop and and um i think just like overall for me the, my overall feeling on the episode is like reflecting on on this with future projects is is 100 percent going to be a thing and that i feel like this episode while it was very dialogue heavy and it also, um, you know, just basically kept you questioning and like wondering like, okay, is he telling the truth? Is he lying? Is she lying? Is he lying? Is he, is she lying? Like there was so much back and forth in the dialogue between Sylvie, uh, Loki, and I'm, I, me personally, I'm not going to call this guy King. I, 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 I personally feel, okay, so big reveal in the episode for those of you listening and hanging out if you watch this video on YouTube. Uh, the big reveal in this episode is we end up meeting the 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 what do they keep calling him? the he who remained or or he who... yeah he who remains yeah mm -hmm. he who remains and the episode specifically does not let us get a name he said and he even says it he's like oh it's not as simple as a name they call me the you know the 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 what was it the dictator the conqueror, the conqueror blah 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 and he doesn't say his name and I I think the reason why Marvel chose to do that is because spoiler alert uh at the end of this episode uh, sylvie does end up killing him because there comes a point in the episode where king or not king in this case in my case um he says that we've come uh we've passed a crossing point where he himself doesn't even know what's going to happen next and um he was able to avoid and, and do all this stuff 
up until that point. And now he says basically that it's up to them. Uh, and so the reason why I feel like I'm not going to call this person Kang is because he is the person who survived throughout all of the what he said the multi-universal war and all the different versions of himself he's the one that persisted and i think the king that we were expecting is the one that loki looks up and sees the the, the statue uh yeah at the tva i think that king is going to act differently and i think he's going to be portrayed differently uh and that's yeah. the king the conqueror that we're gonna come to know in the future I think this yes. this king is just basically uh, a guy who variant. he's a variant. It's a it's a, it's a variant king. That's, that's what he is. Basically, like he he was able to persist, but now that Sylvie made this decision, since he's no longer around, he said, "See you soon." But it's gonna be a worse devil than me, and so yeah. uh, that's why I feel like we didn't give a name to this guy because he was all zany and he was all wacky and stuff like that. Because I think uh, he was just basically doing the job of like keeping the timelines and, and he was trying to like keep himself in, you know in that state of mind of like oh i'm having to like stop these timelines and just keep it this way because we want to live at least to have some sort of like life and it just drove him insane and that's why he's so zany and kind of like oh hi, blah, blah, blah. you know like he's just kind of like off the wall um but I think when we actually meet uh, this new uh, uh, the king, like that we're gonna meet, maybe like an Ant Man or something, that'll be the one that's gonna be the guy that's the big baddie. Um, yeah. But yeah, overall, yeah, I, I overall I just think that the episode was really, really captivating. It, it kept me very entranced in the conversation, and the whole time my mind's just going and thinking like, okay, how like where are we going from here, and like are we gonna have Loki's taking over? Are we not? You know all this other stuff, but it, I was uh, earlier. I was in my friend. Uh, he was streaming Marvel Future Revolution, and we were talking about uh, Black Widow and stuff. And uh, and I mentioned in passing, I said like, I really think that Sylvie's gonna betray Loki in this episode. And he was telling me he was like, Oh, I don't know. If, I don't know if they go that far. I think that's a little bit of a stretch. And uh, sure enough, it fucking happens. She entices him and makes him think that okay i'm gonna listen and then last second just says like i'm not you and she just fucking tell tem pads his ass out of there and um and yeah basically oh, kills tem -pad. What, what was just the uh like what was it just that no yeah just, she, like, she, she did her enchantment it. thing to push him back but he went through the like little portal so i, I would think it's a tem pad or something well, no, she was it, holding it was, the. Uh, she was uh, holding the the oh, whatever the, yeah, the little she had. Thing. Yeah, 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 yeah. So that thing. Hmm. So um, so yeah, I mean that that's basically the breakdown of how things unfolded. Like the the he who remains gives a huge speech, just talking about how hit one in hit. I think he said the thirty first Earth or something like that yeah uh that he discovers that there's different uni universes like stacked up amongst each other and um and that he ends up meeting up with himself and they there was a time of peace of of just different versions of themselves from different universes working together but then that's basically what started the war was other versions of himself were not so nice and like we get this whole breakdown and so uh brawly how'd you feel about this whole like basically like expedition um uh exposition speech that he gave um you know it covered pretty much the, the talking points about what you all really were thinking about where we know we're heading toward a multiverse we know that it had to start somewhere which is kind of weird we, we kept thinking oh it's gonna you know it started with with wandavision right because the realities and then we took a break from that with with captain uh, with uh, Captain America and Winter Soldier or Falcon and Winter Soldier and then you know we came to this so so we knew going into this series we knew okay they're gonna jump a lot of timelines they're gonna jump jump into a lot of realities so we knew it was already gonna start there and we kind of knew at the end like where it was gonna head to I think this was kind of like the easiest to portray because it deals with time and everyone kind of knows who Kang is and, and who he is now I agree with you in the sense that I they didn't give us a name, so I won't call this particular person 
Kang, but it is Kang because he he says more people of him is coming and yeah. it is he. Yeah, it's, you know it's, it's I mean? made the so same like, actor. On a technicality, it's Kang. Yeah, yeah, it's 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 the same actor. It's, it's the, same, the actor. same actor. Right, right, right. So, yeah. um, I thought. I, I I thought the the movie points was cool. I thought he acted pretty well. I think a lot of people will you know enjoy his uh, interpretation of Kang, whatever the evil one is. Um, this one was kind of different. I wasn't expecting him to be this kind of like giddy and kind of like loose and all this stuff uh, with his words and his actions. Um, I kind of was expecting some kind of boss. At the end of the time, the one that survived it all, I thought it would be more of like, you know, some kind of badass being. But, I mean, it's understandable. He's the one that survived to the end, and he's the one who's at the end of the time. And he's the one that controls uh, Alioth, which is really cool, that that pet uh, cloud monster thing that he has. So, and that's, how, and that's how he stops the first war that he talked about, is having that pet. So, I'm, I'm going to guess that's going to play a role in the future. Or at least season two. Um, I'll give my thoughts on the, on the series itself, you know, toward the end. But I thought I thought the conversations that these characters had, and I thought the episode was cool and good, and, and it definitely kept me engaged throughout the part. Definitely did pique my interest. <laughs> Hi, of course. <laughs> but um, okay, so yeah, so. I guess uh, at this point in the conversation, we can kind of pinpoint, like everyone pinpoint something that you feel like you want to talk about or you want to bring up or something that you uh, noticed. I think for me, the, well, the, the one thing that I want to bring up is just basically um, uh, mo the, the moment that Loki gets back, he has his moment of sadness and then he gets up and he's like searching around the TVA. And he sees uh, Hunter D15 and Mobius talking and looking at, uh, at the, the branching timeline. And Loki says, like, he starts breaking it all down. And he's like, there is someone. He knows everything. But now he doesn't. Blah, blah. It's complicated. And then Mobius says, like, who are you? And that uh, that's very confusing. I'm, 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 it's one of those things that I'm sure we're going to get more answers to. I, I really don't know if we're going to get answers to that specific question um uh, in doctor strange or spider-man or something like that but uh, that's crazy because the mobius we saw was in ravona's uh chambers um or like in her office and i don't know who this new mobius is i don't know if uh sylvie used that little uh circle pad to send him to a different timeline where there's a different tva that still thinks that they're real um and maybe that different timeline because uh, the timeline that w that he, loki was in there was statues of three heads everywhere and there was three timekeepers and all that stuff and then in 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 this new tva he sees mobius and hunter th uh, d15 and he looks at the statue and there's one king well there, there's the, the, the conqueror i guess it's king yeah and king. so i'm wondering if this is a different timeline uh, or now this timeline has become the more dominant one or something where Kang is known to the TVA. The TVA knows that who's in charge and no one's like, oh, who are they? Like, uh, th that might be a thing. So I have I have a couple theories. Um, my first one is after Sylvie killed this variant Kang, I think she, I think there was some point between when loki was sent back or i don't know but i think the timeline has already um changed in the sense that uh that kang that was there before is now dead and another kang has taken his place mm -hmm. especially because of how he said you know i'll see you soon yeah so it was not like it was an obvious hint that and he said it himself like somebody is going to take my place and a reincarnation and all that good shit like you could kill me but i'm going to come back and i i'm going and he even says it he says and i'm going to end up right back here so what i think happens is is when she killed him there was some point where the timeline uh everything in the timeline changed and the king like the Kang that was dead has now been replaced with the more evil Kang that we're that we all know. 
Um, so that's one theory I have. And then there's the other one that I have, which is a little bit out there. Uh, but, dude, for a very, for like the whole time that this variant Kang was talking, I did not believe him one bit. I did not believe him. Mm-hmm. I felt like there was some, like, I feel like there was something else behind the way this dude was talking. Like, I, I don't know how or what. I feel like uh, one of the theories I have is that he was trapped there. He wasn't there on purpose. And I think that 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 void world eating cloud thing was it alioth or whatever i think it was yeah i think it was there to keep him in not to keep people out and i feel like his death was the only way that he could be released from wherever the fuck he was at Mm -hmm. um which is which is why I, i don't know it was just a lot of like it's just a lot of what ifs, right? Because, um, what if he was trapped there? Killing him allows him to like leave from that place and actually like conquer other timelines. Uh, maybe like that's that's another thing. Maybe he he kept saying that everybody else was worse than him, but what if that's not true? Yeah. I don't know. I, I feel like this dude was not being one hundred percent truthful with it. Like it just all seemed too easy. Like, he literally gave them the throne. Yeah. Like, how is it, like, he literally was like, guys, I don't want to do this anymore. Just yeah, do what I do. Yeah, I, I, it, it definitely is weird. It could be, you know, just something, though, because he kept saying, like, oh, everything's preset. Look, look at these papers. Like, I know what you're going to say. And then they're like, well, why are you making us do this if you already know how it's going to play out? And, like, you know, he's like, oh, don't spoil that. Like, we'll get to that, you know, through the journey. But then we get to the crossing point where then he can't tell anymore. But it's really, I don't know, it, it's its interesting because it's like, do we really want to believe that there was all, all of it was predetermined? Like classic Loki doing that thing and dying and all this other stuff was all predetermined just to get them there. Like, I see where, I see where you're coming from, but it's also yeah. like... It's a little reach. It's a little reachy. Yeah, it's a little reachy, but I just feel like it, it just all comes down to, like, if Marvel really, like, because Marvel could do it. They could just literally be like, no, like, that that was it. Like, it was all predetermined and all everything that happened is supposed to happen. But, like, I, I don't know. It, it, it's definitely tricky to think about. Yeah, but... it's, it's it, once you start to get, especially once you start to get into, like, multiversal stuff, uh-huh. right? Like, there's literally endless possibilities of how this could happen. Yeah. Um, so it, it, it gets really tricky because at this point, like there's not a, a set, there, there are no set rules anymore. Like mm-hmm. at this point in Marvel, literally anything could happen. Yeah. So, um, it's so funny because it's know. like after, after just watching Black Widow and, um, what do you call it? The, I don't want to spoil anything just in case people were watching this and they don't, haven't seen Black Widow or something. But uh, the problems in that movie seem so small <laughs> compared to uh, can't, uh, this, uh, you know, he who remained guy dying and then behind him of all the branching multiverses just fucking expanding and all yeah. that shit. Well, they gotta give them something to do uh, in the sense of not everyone's gonna be in this multiverse war. Oh, no, no, for sure. I, I totally understand that. I'm just saying, thought, like, it's, yeah, it's, it's just funny, cool. like, in retrospect, like. More like the human characters have to fight, you know. Yeah, they're they're. Uh, I'm just I'm just looking at it in the sense of like, oh, these yeah, human characters are fighting things, for yeah. yeah, they're fighting for their yeah. like you know life on on Earth, but then you know, there's like 50 yeah. bajillion Earths, and there's this guy out there that's gonna like just destroy it or whatever. But right. Uh, also, also, Solara, your 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 thing yeah. about Ravona, I think um, I think this this like changed timeline of like where the new kang is like the leader because obviously okay at the end of the episode you find out that the new kang is the leader of the tva how this kang became the leader of the tva is like the question right like how did it go from being this guy who died five seconds ago to kang in such a short amount of time um uh i think 
however that happened, I think we're going to be in the timeline where Ravona is going to become like Kang's girlfriend. Like maybe, maybe, maybe not girlfriend, but like lo like love interest. You know what I mean? Like I think because you're, we are now set in a place where Mobius doesn't even know who Loki is. So there, th something's changed, right? So that that can't only just affect those two people, right? Yeah, that has I, I to affect. Think, I think Loki got sent to an alternate universe's TVA, and I, I really, I really do think that like the. Like the MCU TVA, like the one that we've known and the one that we've been hanging out with, I think they're gonna focus on managing like the different variant because we're gonna have the main Kang, the Conqueror guy for sure. But I think our TVA, like their new purpose, I feel like is gonna be trying to contain the variant Kangs that are not gonna be like the num the top dog. So, so then, well, so I don't know about here's that. Here's, 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 I don't know scattered. about that. Yeah, because yeah. because yeah, I don't know about that because that that's that 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 asks the question: How is it if Loki got sent to a different timeline where this Kang is now the leader of of this TVA? Oh. How does this Kang play a part in our universe's MCU? You understand what I'm saying? So how does how does they how does this oh, they can go through different universes he can go to that universe if he wants to because they've learned how to do it well the so, thing is, is that my, my okay better question how does a kang from another universe become the uh focal point for this universe's uh i think, big I think it's just about a massive you know what power. i mean probably the probably the quantum realm I, 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 okay. I just feel like Probably it's a massing it. power. Like he, maybe he might be in a different alter, alternate timeline or the alternate universe. But it's just, but he it's finds just, out about this universe. Yeah, okay. it's just about massing yeah, power and then maybe okay. Uh, okay. transferring okay. that way. But okay. I mean, what if, if Ravona did I like the? Like... Uh... What? I was gonna say like what if uh, Ravona like did a reset on the TVA or something? Cause she cause she was like you know kind of leading up as if she was gonna do this fucking huge thing and letting mobius live uh -huh. so, so that, that, what that's, if... what, that's what i'm getting at that's what i'm getting at. i did i honestly didn't like ravona's character at all in this episode uh like i get it i know what they're trying to do they're trying to make her kind of conflicted you know like miss minutes is giving her the runaround she kind of wants to know answers she wants to know answers right so she's basically in the point where mobius and loki were early in her season where she's like okay i want to know what's going on because i don't want this to be a lie for nothing so she wants to protect what she thought was real what she thinks the tva is real but why go ahead and fight mobius well you know what like, hold on let me interject real quick miss minutes does show up in this episode and she's just like oh here you go and she's like this is what i asked for and he's like that's he what said, I'm saying. Yeah, he that's... said you would like that or like you would you you know that might be helpful so maybe you know maybe he you know had an inkling that this would happen and so he he did send information to ravona's character to go and create this new tva with him as but it made it seem like she was turning a leave like oh like she she first kind of says like well the only one that has free will is the one that's in charge mm -hmm. and then she leaves mobius by saying i'm gonna go look for this so-called free will uh -huh. so basically she kind of like no, at the end i don't, I don't think i didn't get that vibe that's what she said. That's that. That's the line she literally. Yeah, but said. Uh, but uh, she's so like, she's in a dominant stance, and she's basically saying like, I think she's. It's a play on like, oh, you like you, you care so much about free will. I'm gonna go find this free will and make it my own. You know, or like make it. What I mean, it, you what could, it needs you could to spin be. it that way, but yeah. then why not? Why not prove Mobius? Well, because you know what's the point? She, I mean, he said like, go ahead, and she's just like, you're just gonna find a way back. I don't think. No, uh, I mean like. It's like saying, okay, well, these sticks don't matter anymore. Let's put them away. Like, obviously, well, they still I use them as well. It's, so, it's more so just, like, TV show. It's like, oh, why why does the villain talk, not just shoot the, shoot the hero in John Wick? But, you know, they don't. It's it, I think it's just one of those kind of moments where it's like, she let her go. I think she's conflicted. That, my, my point of view, I think she's conflicted that she's going to go look for Anne. I think that's what she wants to do, uh, which is just kind of, like, it's kind of like, I don't know, I would have done it in a different way instead of, like, attacking Mobius or, like, pushing him on the ground. I would have just said, fine, you know, like, you run things here. I'm going to go look for, you know, this so-called free will. Yeah. Whatever, right? 
something like that would have made more sense to me than her be def like have this one stance on protecting the TVA and the lie and everything, and then just dipping to go look for something. You know, like I I didn't like the yeah the, you know the the sudden change. Yeah, I'm pretty sure it has to do with the information she got from Miss Minutes thing. Pretty sure, but yeah. But uh, I definitely feel like that that moment that exchange with with uh, Ravona and, and Mobius, you, it you kind of it kind of hits you how like Mobius was such a prominent character in this whole series, and it kind of hits you in this one moment where he kind of is like he doesn't really have much, you know, <laughs> like. Let, well, let, no, let, I'm I'm a, I'm gonna get to that. But, yeah, but, but I feel like I feel like he had all this conviction. And he had all of this like drive. Uh, I, I'm, after I'm he get to that with a different character though. After, different character. after he got um, after he got like you know on Loki's side or whatever, and he did all the stuff in the void. But like after his conversation with Ravona, I definitely, me personally, I felt like there was this kind of like disconnect, where I was like, man, this this character kind of you know doesn't really yeah he really doesn't offer much anyway. yeah he doesn't really offer much and he mm -hmm. can't really do much right now and it mm -hmm. just sucks because he like does, he still doesn't know where he's from he has to figure that out and um uh and yeah it, it just it kind of put it, it kind of checked him you know it's kind of like okay yeah mobius like you're a cool guy and all but like you know what can you do here <laughs> and um and so yeah I'm, I'm excited to see what his role will be in in season two um mm -hmm. But I do, I do want to, I do want to point out something that we haven't talked about yet. Yeah. Um. Now that we've seen the episode, now you can kind of understand that, or now I kind of understand. I saw this on Twitter a couple, like, um, before we started talking. But now, um, did you guys notice how the uh, title card for Marvel Studios had uh, every, like, all, like, all the Marvel characters talking at one time? Yeah. Like, I, uh, yeah, so now, now, like, now after seeing the episode, it all makes sense. It's like all the the different, like, uh, scenes and scenarios all, like, meshing at once. So it kind of, like, hints at, like, the, the whole multiversal shit. So I think it's pretty. I thought, oh, I thought oh, that shit I was. Really, I, got, I didn't get that kind of vibe. I got the vibe of, like, this stuff doesn't matter anymore. Like, this is the past. Now we're moving on the future you know kind of like because there was a lot of things that were said and it was kind of going backwards in time it, 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 it first started off with like sam and talking about and yeah, when they played the music like, oh my yeah. god yeah it was pretty uh when it first came out i was, was like pretty. wait a second what the? yeah so i think it's oh, just like, it? like like okay we're done with that phase we're now in phase four basically that that's what i kind of but i can see it your way too yeah i think um I think, uh, I, I guess what we can kind of wrap up this whole discussion on is, is, uh, Sylvie's character. Uh, how does everyone feel? Uh, Slar, you can go first. How, how, do, how do we feel about how Sylvie ended up and when, how she acted in this episode? Uh, I think, I mean, she did say herself, can't trust, she can't really trust anybody. And I mean... I feel like she's going to be end up being like the villain that people are going to have to be taken down or like, I don't know. I feel like it all like rides on like what clues we get from everything else. Like, but I think, I think she's, she's probably going to end up like, you know, discovering that, oh shit, maybe, uh, Tom Hiddleston, Loki had a point. And then she's gonna kind of pull a 180, but it's gonna be too late. And then, uh, that, I mean, that's where I see things going. But uh, as far as her character, I, I I liked it. I like her, but she, I mean, she kind of like I expected she was gonna do what she did and just yeah. like, yeah. So I'm it, not it, I'm not it, mad. I'm just a little disappointed. It, yeah, it, it is rough because it's like especially with how much progression and because uh, again I, ha I can't stress enough this the loki that we got in this episode is from right after the first avengers movie so like all the, i feel like honestly i feel like this loki like he went through more than our loki <laughs> uh 
because uh, he had to witness his mom dying. He had to witness his dad dying. He had like he saw it all through the tape. He, he, he found out that another variant of himself killed his brother. You know, all, all these different emotions that this guy must be going through. And then finally, like, coming to the realization that, like, there is free will, you can't be a good person, and all that stuff. And breaking breaking his his uh, chain of, of constant betrayal and, and distrust and stuff like that. And finally fully giving himself to somebody, and then they betray him. Like, god damn. That was huge character growth. Like he finally understood, like what it was exactly that he, like what pain he caused to other people. And like I, I feel I felt like that, that like moment where he was just like on his knees and just like pretty much crying. Right. Yeah. Um, uh, man, that I, I, I felt it. I feel. I, 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 one more thing I want to throw in is I feel like the production value in this episode was like tremendously. Like the budget went into this shit. Like the whole opening sequence, like the way the world looked and and how that big. Well, castle. I think the whole series was like that. I, I can't. I can't really say like, oh, this one was like ten times better than the other ones because there's like many parts in many episodes. There was so much budget and so much nice. Production value, the score was amazing. I feel like this the one and episode three were like the most though. Like they I had, the, they I, had I, don't, I, I can't really see this one. This one was like mainly shot inside a danky citadel. Yes, you get some things outside, which is cool. But like I, I thought like, even the fight more when they were better. on I thought when they were on Lamentis, it was more you get you everybody loved the the, the borderland look kind of things, the, everything was crumbling, you got the moon coming down. Ships exploding. Like I thought, there was way better than the other ones than this one. But I won't say this one was bad. I just didn't see, you know, the production value. Other than like his little story that he was showing. And... Mm-hmm. That's what I mean. Like I just felt like there was so much more. Like the, the outside looked amazing when the episode first started. It looked incredible. Uh, and then the 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 the, uh, the amount of magic that was used during their little scuffle throughout the episode was really really well done and um better than other fight scenes that we had gotten no, and it was better than, uh, yeah it was better than other and fights. then yeah just the presentation of that that uh kane did was um just all in all like really really good i think yeah. but um but yeah so uh so yeah sylvie uh goss you want to go next we don't like her no more <laughs> we don't like her no more so i was like i'm mad i'm just disappointed yeah we don't we don't we don't i mean that i i i I guess that's cool or whatever but we don't we don't we don't stand her no more i got you we don't stand her no more what she did to my boy fucked up man you know dude the whole time i'm gonna tell you right now you know this motherfucker wanted to tell her he loved her you know he did you felt it he when he was like oh when he, he was like I don't dude. when he, he was like but you, but you know he, he like it's hard for him to say that because it's fucking Loki so he's not that's why all he said was no 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 I, no, I, I no, no no hold on hold on no 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 we can't just say oh because he's Loki he can't do it we just talked about or at least Vash eloquently talked about how he had this progression and he saw all yes, these things correct. and he's gone through all this shit correct so, yes it's hard but he should have been able to. But my, my point, but you have to still, that's fine, but you also still understand that if he had done that, that would have been the first time that he's ever told somebody that he loved them sincere, sincerely, besides his parents, I guess, and uh, to some extent his brother. Yeah. But like, he's never told anybody else outside of that that he loved them. So yeah, he might have gone through all of these changes and all this stuff. It's still going to be really hard for him to express emotion. And that's why no. he's, all he said, all he said was, um, I just want you to be okay. And I and to me that was like his version of saying, you know, I love you, I care for you. And yeah, when he was like think, Yeah, yeah. So like seeing like and then when they when they like you know that this dude like loved it loved Sylvie and cared for her. Like it however you want to slice the cake, it's the truth. And mm-hmm. seeing him like rejected like that, nah bro. I okay, like I just don't. Uh, well, 
Give me the green light. She 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 let him Give on. Give me you. the green light, host, and then I could go off. Right? Oh, yeah, I mean we're we're basically at the point of just you can talk about whatever. Okay. Yeah. So, like, okay, I'll retract. I'll say I I I and I admit defeat in the sense of the betrayal part. But you have to understand that this whole series, she never really like. Everybody was always knowing that okay, Loki loves a girl, but the girl's kind of like for the mission. And I've said this on past pro- uh, podcasts before, or 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 dis- our discussions. I've said it that he's putting in all the all the effort and all the the he's he's doing all the work in the sense of the love stuff, and she's just kind of like there, you know. I'm doing this for the mission, and she said this couple, you know a couple episodes in a row b- before. So like for the only thing that I would say that was kind of messed up is the kiss, right? The kiss was kind of messed up. They do end up kissing yes. for a little bit. And she used that to push him out of the other way. My whole reasoning was is that she did it to get him out of the way so she could complete her mission. Because I don't think it's betrayal when her thoughts are not, oh, I love this person, or I want to put this person over the mission. She's always been a, the mission for always. So that's why that's where I'm coming from in the sense I don't think it's betrayal. Okay, that's the only thing. But other than that, you know, fine. Could be deemed... Um, betraying and all that stuff she messed up she went with her gut she was hurt she did she you know they basically something we haven't talked about is this minutes basically it tells them look we'll give you whatever the hell you want you, you want the throne you want the infinity gauntlet you want to kill thanos it's yours right it was basically uh what, what's the name of rusho or whatever marosho uh say it's yours my friend like you could just have it if you guys just walk away because you can have whatever you want you can have a timeline where you're together right and that kind of tempted Loki, right? Because I think the thing, and then, and then it's gonna get to my gripe, right? But I'm, I'm gonna first go with this. Kind of gave Loki the thoughts of, well, this could work, right? Like I can have a timeline where it could be me and her, right? And 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 everything's all for Like I don't think he was gonna go for it until he met this Kang guy. And so when Kang basically says, "Look," You got two options. You kill me and unleash hell, or you guys take over. I'll give you guys the throne. Go ahead. Right? You guys can run it any way you want, but there needs to be someone in my seat. And so Loki, you know, Sylvie thought, oh, well, Loki just wants it for himself. Loki wanted it to be, well, no, I wanted it for for us, right? He wants it for together. So that's where, it, again, it stems down to he cared about her, but she cared more about the mission than him. That was my biggest. That that was kind of like where everything went by. Um, what I would say about Loki. That might mute me for this, but you know I have to say it. This this Loki, I I understand what he went through, and I'm not gonna just deny that this was a great transformation. That this Loki went through a bunch of stuff. That this you know traumatic you know episodes. Got betrayed, got let down, lost everything. At the, at the end, of, at the end of the episode, he has nobody. He doesn't even have Mobius. He has nobody. He's stuck in a in a universe in a multiverse by himself, right? But man, Loki is boring. And I get that it's because he's burying it all and trying to get away from his past. But man, like they they did this man so dirty. Like they did him so dirty. Like power wise, his personality, his humor. It's like he doesn't matter. Like, you want to talk about how Mobius doesn't matter? I feel like Loki doesn't matter now anymore. Like, you're going to get me hyped for season two? For what? What did I see from him in this there other than is. like. There it is. The yeah, yeah, there it is. Special. Dude. This is how we keep him on the show. Those of you in the comments, blame this man. Boo this man. Boo this man. Wait. Okay, I'm just saying. Did like, give him everything, and then am I just am I not wrong, Goss? Am I not wrong? Am I right? Like, come on! Like, you we don't get no. anything <laughs> in every episode. We kept saying, "Well, why is Loki so powered down?" And we had to make up the right. excuse. You and all I, the TVA. You and I have had this conversation, and this is something that you yourself have admitted. But you, like, you are. Huge... I'm entitled to my opinion, first of all, right? I'm entitled. Yeah, of course. You're entitled to your opinion. But you are enticed by very, very standardized tropes. 
Okay. You want the uh, the definitive hero. You want the most amazing badass villain. No, oh, I just want Loki to have something. No, That's I'm just saying. I'm just saying that you are influenced so much by those. No, no, by no, no, those, no, no, no. Yeah, yes, bro. I'm we've not had mad. This no, I'm, not mad that is not, I'm not mad that there was no final boss. We, it was even talked about today. Even Solara was like that. The ending was kind of disappointing, like a little bit. What, what I'm, what I'm, what. the point that I'm getting at is this: Loki could perform in a different way and still be impactful. He doesn't so you're have still to hyped be... on Loki. I, I, I want you to be really honest. Yeah, you're what? still hyped on Loki. I'm I'm hyped, in the sense of his, a bit like again, Loki's don't die. His ability to continue to persevere throughout different areas of where he has no power or he has no understanding of what's going on or he had he's thrown for, through a loop over and over and over when it comes to where what time is he in when's the last time he slept. All of this shit. Like, he has persevered through it all. And he's met adversity head on. And still, he's still alive. That's what entices me to the character. Because he doesn't have to be the strongest in the room. He doesn't have to be the most clever in the room at all I'm times. I'm not saying that. No, but what I'm, what I'm saying is you find his journey as him coming off as not compelling or not uh proactive or, or not doing the most when in actuality all these plus pieces of the puzzle have been moved because of this guy okay time out all right you like that his that he could persevere and that he escaped all, all the defeat and he keeps on going right mm -hmm. what makes him different from the mcu version of himself the only reason he died was when he he actually changed and went to thanos and fought Thanos and got killed. The, That's the, the only time the, he got the killed. The change, well, I mean, to, to answer your question, the, the the difference between the MCU version of himself is because he wasn't on screen 90% uh, of the time. He was able to persevere because he was just behind the scenes and then he shows up on Ragnar on the um, on that one planet that, that uh, uh, Hulk but was still, on. Uh, well, he, no, he but what I'm, saying, what I'm saying is obviously when the magnifying glass is on someone a little bit more, then it comes, you know, into fruition like what exactly they have to go through and what what they're actually met with from time to time. It's easier to say like, oh, MCU Loki got to live and persevere. Well, yeah, because Loki's lived, so it's like it, it still holds true. It's just this was how this show presented it, and I I don't feel like he, I don't feel like he underperformed, but I also understand that TV shows under like they they nerf the heroes. Like that, it's just it's a given. Like Falcon Winter Soldier got nerfed, Wandavision got nerfed. You, you, mm, mm, okay, I'll give you Falcon Winter Soldier, even though I think Winter Soldier did way more in the series than he ever did in the shows, except for except for his own movie with, with Captain America. But I mean, after that, he didn't do anything compared to what he did in the series. So, you, I don't okay, know so about it's that. hard to say he would do anything when he was in cryo in in Wakanda. Like, how is he going to do anything? No, I'm just saying, in Infinity War, he didn't do much. Well, okay, in Infinity War, um, Rock, what did Rocket do? What did Groot do? He had more lines than him. Well, yeah, okay, obviously, there's going to be more key uh, components to a whole story. And there's going to be bigger players, of course. But you've always said, I, I'm kind of goes like, back to saying how he had the magnifying glass. When you have the uh -huh. magnifying glass of certain characters, it's like, of course, you're going to see them do more than the other ones exactly. behind the scenes. It's like, you know, that final fight in Endgame, it's like, okay, we focused yeah, on... But, that, that, but, but what that does is contradict what he's saying, because he's saying that these shows are feeling nerfed, but they're magnified. They're, so you yeah, you can but more The thing is, you can magnify a character... But also uh -huh. keep them grounded. Like you can, you can focus on their everyday, like waking moment. But you can also bring them down I mean, to I, where they're I, not. I agree. I agree. In at least the three of three shows that we watch, the, the the feeling feels like okay, they're all kind of nerfed in some way, right? In some way, they're kind of nerfed. You know, like we're like Wanda was kind of nerfed, even yeah, though maybe she was not literally making her own reality. Which, <laughs> um. I don't know. It's just like I said, I don't. I don't say these things to have hot takes. I say it because my opinion. It's the way I see things and and the character. And I just felt like, yeah, I enjoyed the series. I enjoyed this ride. I enjoyed the thing with Mobius and him and having the, the this this hunt. But this series, you know, you can't. It, it's not without its criticism. 
And like one big criticism is what was episode two when Sylvia dropped all those bombs on the timeline and then for what, right? Like it never got mentioned again. And so then we were on this whole roller coaster with them. And I don't care. Like at the end of the day, like it's fine. Like I love the dialogue between the two characters. I love when they were both on the same screen because it was engaging and their scenes were awesome. And even though the fight scenes weren't great, it was still, still got the point. I love the story about free will versus control. I like that. I do. I, I do enjoy the series, but I do feel that like, do you do, does, does, does Marvel even remember that he's an, he's a frost giant? They don't even mention that at all in this, right? Like, and this is not because of past Avengers. This is literally his origin, is that he's a he's a frost giant. So like, you know what I mean? Like that doesn't ever come into play. He just kind of seems like. Like, if, like, they made him into Joe Schmo, and we're supposed to be like, okay, like, just because he's Loki and he has all this flair that was, that's going to keep his character above water. And I just, I don't know, you know, it just, it just feels weird. Cause it just feels like what, what my, I guess, like, my, you know, at the end of the day, my gripe is, and it's not, it's, it's because of season two. So I, I kind of give it a pass because of season two. But I felt like every time he was on screen with someone else, they're the reason. Like, they're the ones that kind of steal the show, right? Like, Mobius was, was the one that was kind of pulling it. Sylvia was the one kind of pulling it. All the other Lokis that were on there, especially old Loki and 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 young Loki and alligator Loki at some time were doing everything, you know? And so, like, yeah, he has his moment, but it always felt like he was outshined, and I just wish he wasn't outshined all the time. But, that again, that's my, that's my feeling. I don't know if you agree... But that's how I felt. Like he got so, outshined a lot. So it's funny because I feel like all the uh, all characters in recent Marvel stuff, like or all side characters, have pretty much outshone like the main focus characters. You know, Black yeah. Widow movie. Uh, you know, Cap Winter Soldier. I felt like some of the side characters. Uh, I mean, Zemo. Hello. Um, yeah. And John even in WandaVision, like uh, Walker. Walker. There you go. So I, I I think that's that could just probably be just a reoccurring theme, a reoccurring Marvel thing. Yeah. That uh, the side characters are definitely like just pulling up because I I got to give them a little bit of uh, time in the light too. So what were you gonna say, Goss? Oh, I I I think it's funny that you say that, Brawly, because I actually feel the opposite. I have stated this before throughout this time that we've done this discussions that i was never a fan of loki um i always felt that anytime loki was on screen in mcu movies it, he was boring mm -hmm. after the first time i saw him it was every single time he came on screen it was the same sa same thing every single time it was loki mm -hmm. he's there he's lying you get what he wants every single time it's never changed mm -hmm. so to me that's boring when you have a character that stays the same throughout like six, seven movies, that's boring as shit. Every time Loki comes on screen, it's going to be the same thing. So to me, this was different because you got to see him put in a situation that he had no control over. He didn't know what was going to happen. He couldn't be who he was. He couldn't be the, the god of mischief. He couldn't do all the snappy things that he did in all the other movies and show himself being, you know, arrogant and um, mischievous or whatever. Um, and to me, when you put a character that has been the same for so long in a situation where it's not the same and they don't have any control over that and you see character progression and growth, I enjoy stuff like that because I feel like as a character, this is finally like something different out of him. Instead of seeing the same old, oh, it's Loki. You think that he's not bad. Oh, he's bad again. Oh, he's kind of good, but he's bad anyway. And it's just the same, like it's the same cat and mouse chase with Loki. And you could even say it like Mobius says it in like, I don't know, like the second or third episode. He's like, it's always this with you like it's never anything different like it's always the same thing you're always going to do the same thing you're always going to say the same thing so like seeing him go from doing that to changing his whole perspective on basically his entire life is 
huge, huge character progression and growth, especially seeing how he's going to interact with the rest of the MCU, having exp- having gone through this entire like change. If so you, to me, if you if he was a character you're saying he is, that he's the same boring character that doesn't make the same choice, that always gets what he wants, and always gets away. He would not have attacked Thanos. He would not have died. And that's fine, but that happened when at the end of his life. Yeah, the last because movie? that's where development shows is at the end. Well, that, but that's the thing is that's a reoccurring conversation between a lot of people is that, uh, I mean, at least that I've seen, a lot of people bring up the fact that they, they get tired of the trope of a villain doing one good deed to right all of his wrongs. And yep. basically what, what this is presenting is like, okay, well, we're going to tackle that head on. And yeah, Loki did that one good thing at the end of, uh, uh, during Endgame or at the end of Infinity War where he, where he died. But it wasn't just that one good thing. Well, yeah, I mean, he, okay, but the, it was always a slight. It was like a good thing to get what he wanted in the end. But this wow. last, yes. the, the last thing that he did was a good thing just to help, you know, his brother. I, I guess like what I'm saying is like, he started the way with teaming up with Thanos. That's all he got the, the time stone or the, the space stone. Uh-huh. That's all he got it because he got it from Thanos. Yeah. And so by the end of it, not even just the end, but even when Ragnarok, he could have abandoned his people and gone with his sister. He didn't. You know, he, he but defended. But the thing is that Loki always wanted to be, he, he well, got Thanos' help, but he wasn't going to stay with, he wanted to overtake Thanos. Well, yeah, of course, right? Obviously. So he, that's he, what I mean is that there's always a constant, at least with the old Loki, was well, that was always a constant. So it's like, that one good deed, yeah, he did that, and that's why he died. The RMCU Loki died that way, but it. This is what this is showing. Like, let's take a villain, but actually give him a, a, a an arc that helps him become redeemable and and uh, just mold him into a whole different progression. Because I, 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 I and like I want to explain it this way. There's another way I can explain it. See, when I would watch our Loki and MCU, and he would get fucked over for all the dumb shit that he did, I would get hype. I'd be like, "Fuck yeah, fuck that guy." He's yeah, just, that's, I, that's what fuck that deserve. guy. Yeah, right. yeah, yes, right. You're you're correct. At the end of this, I did not want any of that to happen to this Loki. The way that he got fucked over by Sylvie, I did not want that for him. I did not want for like Mobius to forget who he was. It was the first time that I, for this character, I did not want the bad thing to happen to him. I wanted him to, like, have a good ending. I didn't want I him think, to end up I in jail. The, my, I, know, I know you're going to the same well, but I think you're in the very big minority. You're in the, you're in the minority where you would be cheering if Thanos killed him. Like, you would cheer because Thanos killed him because that's what he got and that's what he deserved. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah, I mean, yes, it's it's a self. It, yes, Should, I know. I know. I keep going it's, back. One, I, I, I it's fine, that, like, and yeah, and yeah. I get that. I I get that. But in my eyes, that's it's like Vash said. It's one thing that he did, and he did it in a selfless act. But right, the thing is, it, is that, but my I, point, I and I've made this point. I've made this point before. Loki has always been the character because we've had this conversation. Where Loki has always been the character where a selfless act from him is always during a life or death situation. Right. And in and in Thanos' case, he was gonna die anyway. You think Set Thanos was not gonna kill him? He was gonna die anyway. Let's let's just be honest. He was gonna get he was gonna get fucked. Either way, he was gonna die. So he I was mean, put like, in the situ- yeah, So yeah, he yeah, was yeah. put in a situation where it was either death or death. So he had no other choice. I don't to know. Me, I, I don't know about me, that. I don't know about that. It's, th- the it's thing... Thanos. What? Okay, what right, you, right. What okay, are you okay, talking okay, about? Right. Okay, take that, right? Take that energy. What has Thanos done to the characters that you know that he's done that where he kind of like, ah, fuck you, I'm going to kill you anyway. Like, who has he done that to? He didn't do it to Rowan. And Rowan basically spat he him in his face. Gamora. <laughs> he did it to Gamora. He Gamora did it to his own daughter. daughter. He did it to Drax. He didn't do the drag. And he, he didn't uh, do it. And he, 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 he even has it in the speech. He says, oh, it was never personal, but this, I, I'm going to enjoy it. Like, yeah, he, oh, no. okay, because this is like when he did time travel 
I'm not saying Thanos is not a villain. I'm saying he it's not in his nature to double cross because in, in his mind he's all powerful. So he doesn't have to stoop to that level I to can't be like wait for the cloud know. memes of Thanos did nothing wrong. He's gonna uh, hear, I know, he's gonna hear bro, I saying know. this. Look, yeah, look, look again, I I understand and and I get the I get the archetype. Like I'm not I'm not denying that there's no character development and that it's wasted. I'm not this is not Captain America uh, Captain Keep wanting to say Captain Falcon, god damn it. I know. Soldier. It's not that. It's not in that sense. I do like this, you know, I do like where the character is going. In the sense I like the development that he had and all this stuff. I just like, you know, it, it's just what Sonora said. It's more about the T V series, and Bash said this too. T V series kind of nurse these characters because they gotta stretch it for more than two hours. This is what, like six hours. Or whatever. Or uh, maybe like three, three and a half. But at least it's, you know... It's, I just think it's a- that this show it has had probably had the best ending out of all the shows. I don't know about that. I, I, think, I, I don't I, know I, about I, that. I, I think this is probably the I best. Be, I think I disagree on that. The be, what you, like, what, this ending basically kicks off the next phase and it delivered on a villain that we can look forward to in the future. It was too, yeah, but it was like a little too rough. True. And and, and True. so like when you when you look rough. at the other shows, like the other shows kind of just went out on a like a, a soft note whereas this one was like no, something you, you made a decision of, and I don't know decision, WandaVision ended pretty fucking wild. Wanda, no, no Wanda, pretty, yeah. what, what do you mean you guys the 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 fireball we space battle and the, the the vision space battle was super lackluster. Oh, uh, I know. I I'm speaking in terms of like the like the actual. It's, it's what what is like, yeah, what, what, like, the, what is like, bringing to the next like, step? Yeah, you like finally got the yeah. Scarlet Witch. Okay, so, so compare, if you compare the two, which one has more weight? It's not about it's not about weight. It's about the ending of the of the show. Like how the show ended. How did it impact? So, so, but that's the it, thing. It, this, so this show little, has a I season two. You. This show has a season two. I, I, and, I, and I, I, I say, it. it's, it's so weird how this series is getting a second season. Why is it weird? Like, why is it weird to you, Solar? I want I want you to hold on. Let, let me ask. What, how do you feel? Why is it, why is it weird to you? Why? Oh, my fucking Siri went off. Hold on. Stop it. Okay. Um. <laughs> <laughs> um. I guess it's when I said so weird. Anyways. Um. Because. Okay, with WandaVision, I, I, see, because I feel like WandaVision and Winter Soldier definitely, to me, could have been a movie. Like, be, and and now seeing mm-hmm. that Loki is getting a second season means that it's definitely going to come out before any of the other movies because then that second season is going to lead oh. to the whole multiverse of madness and. And and like what what okay what does WandaVision and Captain Winter Soldier gonna lead to? Wait, so wait, wait. First of all, I read not just now, but like ten minutes ago, um, Loki is not gonna start production until January of twenty twenty two. So I am Dude, like one hundred. I'm one hundred. Yeah, well, yeah, like one hundred percent. Multiverse of Madness is gonna come out before Loki season two. Yeah, like, yeah. Multi, season two Multiverse is... of Madness is March twenty fifth. Okay. Yeah, so like, then with that being said, what is season two gonna be about? That's what I'm saying. I'm telling you that this is like we're gonna get cookie crumbs of like what the I think Kang is gonna be the next big baddie for a while. I don't think it's gonna be like, yeah. oh, we're gonna figure this problem out. And we're gonna beat him in the in Ant Man and the Wasp. Where we're gonna beat There's him. In, uh, mm-hmm. I, I definitely think that we're we're gonna have this guy around for a while. And we're so, gonna get Galactus. I don't think he's but, gonna but, be the Thanos. The way, I, think, the way I see it, if you, it, the way I see it, if you're right, Bash, I think the way it's gonna happen is they're gonna fight multiple versions of Kang. Because it's the, like I, I at least I think in the series in the TV show, they're gonna fight one that's pretty much controlling the TVA. I think the TVA is still gonna be around because of Mobius. I think it's kind of going to be like, not like a redo, but basically Loki has to figure a way to get to the end again and, and, and make the right decision or whatever, right? Maybe Sylvie helps or whatever. But I, I think it's going to be different Kangs. Like, I think the Kang that the Ant-Man and the Wasp are going to fight is going to be very different. I think the Kang that's going to probably might appear in 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 uh, Multiverse of Madness is going to be a different one too. So I think you're right, but I think it's going to be multiple entities. Which could be bad, and could you know it could 
could be a bad thing, but you know, whatever. I still think there's other mm. there's room for other enemies like the the Celestials, like Galactus can show up. I think there's room. I swear to God, I swear to God, Kang was gonna. I thought Kang was gonna say Galactus, dude. Uh, I the, thought the, he the was thing, gonna the, say see, Galactus. The, reason, oh, the, the furthest movie. Yeah, yeah, when he was talking about the A Alioth or whatever, he was like, yeah. and I found somebody that like eats worlds and shit. I was like, oh my god, this dude's about to drop Galactus right now. See, the like thing, what? The thing, the furthest movie date that we have is Guardians of the Galaxy Volume Three, which is May fifth of twenty twenty three. Yeah. So I don't. I feel like we don't. We they announced that they're gonna work on a Fantastic Four, but we don't have a date for that. And so that's years from now. I really don't think Galactus is yeah. a thing right now. I think we're going to have... Yeah, no. Well, if we're going to talk about yeah. Fantastic Four, they really need to hit home with Doctor Doom. Because Doctor Doom should be a, a big baddie like What's the same the, That's level why I'm saying the, now that this whole... That's why I'm saying the ending of this show is so good. Because it it, 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 it hits like... This show ended... Season 1 ended for Loki. And it's opening the door for the whole next huge amount of the world that's gonna be blade is coming up soon multiverse could do that spider-man's gonna bring in other spider-man verses and maybe I mean, different I villains and I, stuff the mutants could come at this point but i i think i think the the, the the thing is is that you you think like like this officially started but we've been getting hints of this in in wandavision and in the other movies course, and yeah. as well at the, at the end of um what is it? Far from home. Mm -hmm. We got hints of this too when we saw James, you know, James Jonah Jameson uh, come out too, yeah. and so so I I know what you mean in the sense of like we should be excited for what's to come mm -hmm. versus what the other shows have been, but you have to understand like Falcon and Winter Soldier it literally kind of like tacked on racism, and it it had a more of a deep meaning for what Captain America should be and how Sam Wilson should have been. The, the, the yeah, right of Captain America. No, but story. I'm just saying, like, how it ended with the Flag Smashers and, like, you know, uh, it, 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 I didn't, it's not a terrible ending, but it's definitely, it, it, it was like for a finale, we wanted, we wanted more. We all, we have the discussion. <laughs> yeah, but like, like, see, like, what do you mean by more? Like, do you mean by more as in what's to come in, in future installments? Like, movies? no, no, just how the, ha how the ending was handled. The uh, last okay. episode. So, okay, 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 okay. okay, okay, okay. Just, just pause that, right? So how the ending was handled, mm -hmm. okay? It's handled with a bunch of questions. We don't know who this was. We we didn't get confirmation that it was Kang, even though we're supposed to believe it's Kang because we're comic book nerds, Okay, right? so if you watch the first on, Lord on, of the Rings on, and on, how the first on. Lord of the Rings ends, was right. that like that? It leaves you with a bunch of like, oh, what's gonna happen next? But it's a that's good ending. I, that's why I asked you: Is it because of the future installment, like how it makes you feel? It's in the future or how did this episode end like the uh, the, episode. The, the, epi it, the episode delivered on king it delivered on the the connection between sylvie and loki it, it it delivered on the betrayal it delivered on the season two uh reveal like there's so many things that this episode uh, con the, the multiverse like the branching timeline is now open like there's so many things that this ending delivered I mean, on yeah like yeah but like uh, it's i could say the same thing about like we had a finality on John Walker. We had a finality a on... A finality? What do you on, mean? Like, I'm saying, like, we had an ending of that arc with John no, Walker, now he's a U.S. agent. We had the know. ending, uh, like, a little arc with, with Zemo. Now he might break out and become the leader of the Dark Avengers, whatever. We had Captain America... Falcon becoming Captain America. Like, you know what I mean? Like, like it's not that. It's just how did the episode impact you? I just felt like there was a lot of talking. There was a good fight scene. But that was it, right? But... I agree with you when it comes to how it's going to be portrayed for the future of the MCU. Yes, they had a bigger impact because this is basically what we've been waiting for, right? The multiverse. In yeah. that sense, you're right. Yeah, I, 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 just don't, I, don't, I just don't understand. Like, I'm just I'm I'm conveying my opinion on that. I thought the ending delivered well, oh. and we're writing on this fact so hard. But I don't know why. I just oh, because we I'm said just we stating. didn't agree. We said we didn't agree, and you're just like, I'm not like. We, cause me and me and Goss, it's a lot of things that WandaVision was the be the better end. I I only agree with that. I'll give I'll give my reasons why. Uh -huh. My my biggest reason why is because I I called this uh, last episode and probably the episode before mm -hmm. was that the ending villain was gonna be Kang. So seeing that the last villain and seeing the Kang reveal 
was not as big of a shocker to me because I kind of already like suspected, expected it to be Kang. Um, that's so what's, that's to, what's me, weird to me, because in retrospect, we were sitting there with Mephisto, Quicksilver, and those didn't deliver, and yeah, everyone was pissed about yeah. it. So that's what's weird to me is that like yeah. we. So I'm not mad. Then... It's it's see, okay. I, I'm not upset at it, and I'm not and I, or I'm not like or I'm not uh, disappointed. It's just the impact it had to me was different and, uh, yeah, because weird, I it's because. Like, it's like if I said, oh, the, the last guy in the Royal Rumble is going to be John Cena, and it ends up not being John Cena, what am I going to feel? I'm not going to feel, like, more shocked that it wasn't. It's going to be like, well, shit, it's not John Cena. Like, Well, it, it's, you it's, know? that's not, that's, it's, it's not that. It's just the knowing or having a speculation on who the character is at the end. Like, you think it was and too it, predictable, like, maybe? Yeah, well, uh, maybe a little bit. Not too, not too much, because we did talk about like what we thought like the last episode was uh -huh. gonna have. Um, yeah, we, we so said that not, it could have been a Loki variant. We said it could have. Yeah, been... like we, yeah. So there, there was a lot of different, you know, theories that we had on the ending. So it's not like it was too predictable, but that was definitely my like. If you, if you, we went back last week and you had a gun to my head and you asked me who do you think it's gonna be, and I say Kang, I, or and you give me an option, I'm gonna say it's Kang. Like I, that's that yeah, was going to be I my my bet. So I it, it the impact is not it, it's not that it's not um like it, it, it's not that it doesn't hold weight because it definitely does and I agree with Vash in the fact that this episode does hold way more weight than any of the other finales in the uh the TV series that we've seen but for me at the end of this episode I saw Kang right I saw the, the statue and I was like Badass. Fuck yeah. That's Kang. Sick. At the end of WandaVision, when you see Wanda in the cabin and she's doing the little floaty shit and she's like self-projecting and like reading the fucking demon book and you hear her fucking kids calling at to her from a fucking another dimension. To me, that's more like that is a more oh what the fuck moment. Because that and that could connect to what's happening now. Because be, Kang that is, that that killed, is, that's why she can hear the voice. You know what I mean? That is that is more of a holy shit like it yeah. it was a, it was a it was something like a big attention grabber at the scene so i like it, it was like oh fuck like i did yeah. not see that happening at all like these kids are not supposed to be real why are they real like what the fuck is going on so it was like to me that ending was more holy shit than this ending not to say that this ending doesn't hold weight because like i said and i agree with you the episode does hold more weight than any of the others. It's just the ending of WandaVision was way more like of a what the fuck moment than like shit, hell yeah. I don't you know. know I, mean? I don't know. I mean, I, I can see where you're coming from, but I just feel like me, uh, it's 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 a toss up between Wanda with the book and hearing her kids or being at the end of time as we know it and understanding that the timeline breaks, break, breaks apart to where there could be 50 b billion timelines where there's different versions of Wanda's kids. You know what I mean? So, like, yeah. Yeah. It, it, yeah. It, 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 it flows way more in one direction when it comes to the magnitude of what the fuck's going yeah, on. That, yeah, I, I see and, that. And, and, oh, and, like, man. that's just how I saw it. But, uh, yeah. I, I mean, honestly, thinking about it now, the ending of, of the last Spider-Man movie, we get the Mysterio reveals Peter's identity, and Jonah uh, basically is is covering the news on it and it just hit me we could have the spider-verse thing happen and we could have tom holland peter parker standing in front of an audience and then another spider-man from a different universe show up and then they could just fix his problems yeah no that's what i said i think i i, I talked about this uh when we were watching the episode of how uh or maybe in the beginning of the set of the discussion where the, the the shows and movies are not in chronological order mm -hmm. like this could have this legit could have been the first thing and right when kang died like all the things that you see that are weird glimpses like wanda hearing her kids and J. jonah Jam jameson coming out and reporting on 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 spider-man that could all be because of what happened in kang. yeah so like the like the multiverse has already started. No, I'm just saying because in like I, I made the comment a long time ago when I fought, when I first saw the Spider-Man movie and I 
saw that uh, secret ending. Um, right. I, I made the comment. I was like, man, I, I don't like that this Peter has basically expediated his fucking time. Like, uh, he's already revealed to MJ, already revealed to the world, already like he had all these things happen to him, and he's not even like out of high school yet. Yeah. And so and so I was worried about that, but you know, this might be a way to like kind of to bring that like you know reel him reel him in a little bit. Yeah. I feel like we're definitely not going to get answers until Multiverse of Madness comes out. Yeah. Or 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 Spider Man. Yeah, Spider-Man, I, mean, yeah. I think Spider Man's gonna be like the big one, dude. Like Spider Man. The next big one. Be, I can see. Yeah. Big, yeah. Because Shang Chi looks like it's gonna be self-contained. Venom is its own thing. I don't know if it's gonna be crossing over. Even the Eternals. Something. Yeah, Eternals are, is gonna be something uh, that might be very. Shang Chi is gonna be cool because I think they're gonna add on more to the whole. Uh, Thunderbolt Ross thing, I think, because because Abomination, uh, I think they're gonna add a little bit to it, maybe. Um, which I'm hoping for, but you know, we'll yeah. see. From... But all oh, right, it showed I mean, a wand, get... didn't it? Huh? It didn't. Uh, the Shang Chi trailer, because I remember when we when we went to go see Black Widow, I, I saw like Wong come out. Yeah, like, we, a little I bit. think Abomination's fighting Wong. Oh yeah, I think. But um, but yeah, I mean, I guess that's that's pretty much it. Like. If you guys want to bring up anything specific, we can. But um, overall, Loki was an experience. I, I think, so as much as episode to episode and the journey, from for me personally, I've enjoyed it. And I think the show was fun and um, very captivating. But I also think, like, when you, when you look at it as, at its entirety... Um, while it ended with like a, a great big like door opening for for so much more to happen, um, mm-hmm. I definitely feel like though it, it was just a lot of just it's one of those you know how when you watch like a a movie like like Harry Potter for example and uh, there's like a movie in between another that's like a little bit of a stepping stone like when you look at this show in its entirety for me it felt like. It was one big stepping stone, but it was a great leap for the character Loki uh, on his own. But when it comes to like the show and its entirety and how it's handled and how each episode went and and Sylvie being tossed into the mix, it definitely like it just very you know it, it was it was above average, but just you know at, around the the area of average for me. And when I look at it now that it's all said and done, like you know it was it was a fun time, but. If I were to stack them up against the others, like I, I still think episode to episode, like enjoyment value. I think Falcon the Winter Soldier was just too, too good because I love the dynamic of John Walker and all that shit. Um, and uh, yeah, I don't think any episode tops that John Walker killing that guy scene. I, I, not yet. Like you know, I think everything is good, and like I agree with the sense of like what the last episode of this series brought mm-hmm. but the way that episode was shot and like had everyone feeling that that weird feeling that when he's standing over that guy's body it's like that was oh, the biggest that shock was, factor that big yeah. Shock. So, yeah yeah i agree with that so i agree um, with that uh yeah i mean i'm gonna for my rating for this episode i'd probably give it like i'd probably give it like a eight eight point five uh, as for the series overall and the series overall i'd probably give it like a like a like a 7.5 or 8 like it, it was thoroughly enjoyable and i uh i just think that they they really hit the like all the emotional parts for loki as a character uh if i if you if you remove all the implications of like the mcu and if you remove all of the extra fluff about the world building of the tva and shit like that just like the character loki like i feel like he it this was a journey for him and uh, it's crazy that he's not done he's still going on in season two and uh yeah i just i really enjoyed watching him Uh, every time he was on screen it was very like captivating and interesting and i was excited to see what was going to happen next yeah um Oh, um, I, I thought I think the the episode was definitely good. I mean, we got big, the big reveal. We got the big, you know, Kang, who's going to probably be the, you know, the, the the big baddie for this phase. Um, 
but we'll see, right? Because, you know, we saw Avengers 1 when we put ourselves back into Avengers 1 and we had Loki as the villain. We were just kind of like, huh. But he wasn't the big baddie. He was, you know, it ended up being Thanos at the end. So uh, I'm wondering if he's really going to be the big baddie. I think he's maybe the first baddie. But he, what what he could control and what he talks about with time and in dimensions and things like that does seem pretty high scale power. So it could definitely be something of that uh, uh, scale. Um, honestly, like I like the characters. I like the production. I think I think out of all the shows, I like the production and core of this show more than the others. Um, even though Wanda had a really cool one because it was kind of like shifting time and stuff like that, so that was really cool. But um, yeah, I, I would have to give the episode. The episode itself, I, I definitely felt like the show reached its maximum or climax third, fourth episode. It definitely dipped after that. I, I definitely feel like I was enjoying it more in the beginning of the season and then kind of dipped out away after that. Um, but you know, I think I, I didn't hate any of those episodes, so like, I think that was pretty good. Um, I think I give the episode itself like a 7.5, and I think I would give the show itself a 7.5. Hmm. All right, and guys, for you, um, so I think this episode I would give it an 8 out of 10. Um, and I'd give the series as a whole probably an 8 also, maybe an 8.5. Um, there was only really one episode throughout this series that I didn't really enjoy, and I think that was, like, everybody's episode that wasn't that great. Um, uh, but the series overall was actually amazing, um... I was way more uh, intrigued. That, see, this is this is one of those things where it's like, yeah, I liked Falcon and Winter Soldier. It definitely had one of the bigger moments out of like the entire like TV series MCU stuff that we watched so far um, with the whole John Walker scene. Um, but I, I am a fan of um, of uh, like powers and shit. I like real metaphysical stuff. I, I, I mean, I'm, I'm cool with the whole, like, you know, physicality and the, the, the beat-em-ups and the shit. And, I, I mean, that shit's cool, too. But I am really, really, really about, like, metaphysical shit, seeing all the multiversal stuff, seeing powers being used from different dimensions and different alternate realities and dimensional beings and shit. Like, I... And, celestial beings like that's that's the type of stuff that really really captivates me when it comes to marvel all of my favorite marvel stories are all about that um and it, they're just my favorite so uh seeing stuff like this is uh, fantastic to me uh again this is a very great show especially for me because i was not uh, as big of a fan of loki as a character as i am now uh after seeing the show uh which has helped out a lot and uh, I like when a show or a movie does that for me, when it takes my idea and opinion on a character and completely turns it on his head uh, just based off of like a, a movie or a TV series. I really, really enjoy that. Um, it's it's I don't like for things to stay the same and stay sag stagnant, especially if it's a character like Loki, who's been a part of the MCU from the beginning, basically. Um all the way up to now uh and everything has basically been turned on its head for him uh and to me i find that very fascinating very compelling uh and i really really enjoy that so i'm i'm probably gonna stick with uh actually uh, an 8.5 out of 10 for the whole series we and uh, some more. uh episode i give a seven series i give an eight um it's, I, and and I kind of want to touch up again on how how we were talking about how like some it, the side characters of like all the series that we've seen so far have like stolen the show in one way or another. Mm -hmm. I mean, even like very. Rip, oh my god, why is my fucking Siri going off? <laughs> Anyways, um, 
Miss Minutes coming for you. Uh, Miss Minutes about, oh no. <laughs> Y'all got oh, games no. on your phone? <laughs> you had some games on your phone. Uh, <laughs> what was I saying? Um, da, 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 uh, right. Um, so, like, when it when kind of like thinking back on like the series finales of like the, the shows we've seen so far, I I like that it it leaves me with like questions. Whereas like you know, in WandaVision, like, all right. We saw that whole scene where she's essentially like Doctor Stranging the book, and here's her kids. And then, oh, what what, what about uh, the the other uh, Vision? Like, well, okay, what, what, when are we gonna see him again? And then you think of one uh, of Captain uh, Cap Winter Soldier. Uh, okay, what's Zemo gonna do? What about uh, what about fucking Carter? And 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 so it's like. This one didn't really leave me with that many questions. Like, as far as the side characters, like, okay, Mobius and and Hunter, uh, what was it? B what? B some? Or D B fifteen or D fifteen, and they're they're just kind of like, whatever. I, I mean, okay, well, it's not really mostly the side characters. I, I I mean, like, it it's not really leaving me with like a whole bunch of questions as to like. You know, oh, what's gonna happen next? Because, like, I mean, yeah, we're getting a season two, but at the same time, it didn't really leave me with that much intrigue that the first two series, um, that the that the first two that we that we watched, um, but I mean, either you know, that being said, I'm still looking forward that it at least introduced us to the big bad. Yeah. Um. So. But but you know that's gonna span throughout a couple probably like the other shows in one way and and, and the movies. Yeah. So I, like I mean the cool thing about the side characters is definitely like they're, they're building the young Avengers. We've already gotten like almost every all of them, and then they're building the the you know either the Thunderbolts or the Dark Avengers. With now we got Elena and we got uh, John Walker. So it's like. These side characters are being prominent and they're stealing the show for a reason. It's because Marvel is like, we can't keep these older MCU characters around forever because these actors are not are going to get bored at some point. Um, so it makes sense to continue to build upon and and work these new characters in to kind of pass the torch at some point. But um, but yeah, I mean overall solid and. Um, it's definite. I'm. I'm really curious if we're gonna see Loki in the Doctor Strange movie or not, because I, I, since he's at the forefront, so is Sylvie. I'm sure Doctor Strange is gonna have to come up with some way of learning that they're at the forefront. <laughs> so, I'm wondering if. Uh, so I, huh? So I have. I have a question, or I have. I have something that we can kind of touch up on before we you give like closing statements. But um, so. Kang has only been confirmed to be the big bad for Ant-Man and the Wasp, right? Yeah. What if Kang is like the big bad just for that movie? It would be very surprising. <laughs> to say the least. Because what if because that movie doesn't come out until 2023? Mhm. So there could be so Kang could be a part of season two of Loki and then lead straight into Quantum Mania for yeah. the next year. True. And just like you said, how you don't think Kang is like the real big bad. Uh, Kang, I'm not sure if Kang is going to be. It might be one of those things where Kang is talked about or touched base in, in the movies. But it's I kind of agree with you, especially after reading when Quantum Mania is coming out. I mean, that's years. That's our that's two years away from us. Yeah. And there are a bunch of movies that are gonna come out between now and then. And I really don't think Kang is gonna be like with the fact that we've got so many things that we to look forward to, I don't think Kang is gonna be that big of a deal to where he's like controlling three different movies three different whole like 
mm-hmm. things at yeah, once. I mean, it could be a Thanos situation where he is the after credit scene or he is, you know, in one scene in the movie, but there's like mm-hmm. a, there's someone who's, you know, pull, like doing the, the, the muscle work for that movie or something, but yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm not sure. But yeah. um, but yeah, I mean, I guess that's it. That's it for for me. I, I'm pretty sure we, we're we're hitting the um, hour and thirty minute mark here. So, um, so yeah, uh, it's it's another Marvel TV show in the books. Uh, I feel like they've done. I feel like you know, if the job was to get people to subscribe to Disney Plus, like Marvel's been killing it with their time releases, like. We we get one thing finished and then the next one comes up like pretty soon after, and yeah. uh, definitely very you know applaud applaud to applauds to that because it's like we got WandaVision, it ended and then Falcon Winter Soldier came up a little bit after and then that ended and then we got Loki and then even between Loki we got Black Widow and then uh, August we're getting um, you know next what month if? next month we're getting what, what if? if yeah. Mm-hmm. and then September we're getting Shang Chi so it's like you know bam 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 we're getting so much stuff. Um, I will I say I this. Say Black Widow stuff, right? Not completely. Mm, nah, I wouldn't give away. I was gonna say, what if they? Yeah, no, I, we made that joke in the <laughs> fucking discussion. But um, um, yeah, you know, I want to, I want to, I want to also touch up on that. There is something, um, I, I am really, really surprised at how, you know, I have my favorites. But in a general, like generally speaking, I am so surprised at how well these TV series are doing. Like mm-hmm. I, I have like every single TV series has completely exceeded my expectations. I like tenfold. I agree, I agree with that. Yeah. Like, I agree with that. I, like even considering like I go back and I talk about this all the time. Falcon and Winter Soldier literally was like everything I did not expect. Especially from like just watching the trailer, I was like, "Oh no, here we go, buddy cop movie, great!" And it, like fun, yeah. Yeah, the that's trailer what for I that watch. show is like, I don't know what the hell. I, even I, being yeah. the big Winter Soldier fan, even I was skeptical. I was like, "This does not look like it's going to be that entertaining." Yeah, I remember we were. Yeah, yeah, and it was it was great. It was so good, yeah. and like I feel that I felt the same way about Loki too. I saw the Loki trailer, and I was like, "Oh my god!" Like. Here we go, another thing where it's Loki and he does the bad thing and he pretends he's the good guy, but he's not. And I was just completely wrong and like in a good way, not in like a bad way. I just want to like really congratulate Marvel for such a great job that they're doing with the TV series because I was very much afraid that they were not going to be able to take uh, like the movie stuff and adapt it to a TV series. And they've done an exceedingly great job every single yeah, fucking I honestly, time i honestly think it, it it is because of the six episode seasons and like the mm. fact that they're short yeah. seasons i feel i feel like that also applies to why it's so digestible because it's like okay we got six episodes and they're all like lengthy ones but it, so it's basically like this you're getting an extended director's cut of a movie but like tv show style so it's like yeah. interesting yeah. that they did that but uh, I mean, we can. I can toss this in the, in here. We don't have to talk about it, but I just want to throw it in there before we end end the the stream. But um, uh, there was. I, I don't know if it's gonna lead to anything, but there was a uh, fun little uh, trailer for Ryan Reynolds' new movie, The Free Guy, or it's just called Free Guy, and the and it was the it was a Deadpool reacting to the trailer, but also alongside Korg from Thor, oh, Rag- yeah. Thor Ragnarok. And so yeah. I don't really know if that means much. I don't know if it was just supposed to be fun. Oh, or it definitely means it definitely means a lot. No, I think yeah. I think Marvel I think Marvel tweeted out or something. Some some big corporation tweeted out that Deadpool was now a part of the Marvel MCU. Uh-huh. Well so, I mean people have been saying like even comicbook.com says it. It's it's a big thing, but I do think like they're trying to. I I think what's happening is Deadpool is probably gonna come out sometime next year, but maybe not in time for like all the multiverse stuff. But they want to make sure people kind of like kind of understand. Okay, Deadpool's probably in the MCU now, uh-huh. um, which is it's, it's amazing news. I mean, honestly, 
Yeah. Um, it'll, it'll definitely be really cool just because of the way he is and, you know, rated R stuff is cool, but hopefully he comes out. I mean, they already they, they teased Wolverine last week, teasing Deadpool now. Yeah. Like, god damn. Like, yeah. god damn. I want damn. the mutants, man. I want the mutants so bad. I, just... I want him so bad. Yeah. Hey, it's so bad. So Gosh. bad. Gosh, this... you have to you have to come down for fucking Spider Man. We have to watch Toby Maguire. All four of us have to go I watch swear Toby. I swear to God if Willem Dafoe comes out in that movie, I'm gonna fuck That's shit. I'm you know how much I suck. We don't know. I'm gonna shit I'm gonna shit myself. We don't know. That's what, that's what we all gotta watch it. But I don't want to watch on damn Disney Plus. I'm I'm so like the whole scale of all this stuff, man. This shit's gonna fucking run until like at least our forties and fifties, dude. <laughs> yeah. Like, yeah, I'm here. I'm here for the yeah, ride. This shit's gonna be around for a I'm here, dude. I'm here. Oh man. But um, all right. I just everybody. want to touch up on something. I just want to touch up on something. Oh, Wait. go ahead. Um, what if King? Is only a TV series villain. Nope. We just said we. It's confirmed that he's in Ant Man. I mean, yeah. I thought I thought you know I thought Tony Stark was in Black Widow two and look what or Black hey, Widow. No Widow. spoilers. Oh, oh, oh. Black Widow two. Black Widow. Black Widow, Widow two. <laughs> and there's a second movie. Yeah, Raleigh's from the. Raleigh's from the. Okay, the disclaimer: there is no. He's from the other. Disclaimer for people watching: there is no Black Widow two. Raleigh's fucking stupid. Yeah. Yeah, with the multiverse kids, Raleigh, dude. Raleigh's from the already. multiverse, dude. He's already seen part two. <laughs> what the fuck? <laughs> I do with, like, the, with, the, with the bog hits, dude. But with the multiverse hits. Oh. <laughs> with the multiverse All right, well, hits. I'm going to end it here. Thank you again, everybody who's here uh, discussing the series finale. I know this one was chaotic, but it was a crazy episode. But, um... That's it for us. I think the next discussion we're having is for Resident Evil Infinite Darkness. Broly and I have seen it. I need to catch uh, it. And Solara saw it too. Watch it. He doesn't want to watch it. Want to watch it. <laughs> so I kind of slept through that third episode, so I'm going to have to <laughs> oh, rewatch it. Oh, spoilers! Um, I, I, just, I just said I fell asleep during it. We watched it and I was really tired. Okay. Um, but yeah, Resident Evil Infinite is the next one, and also in- Invincible, we gotta do a discussion at some point. Well, so. we're supposed to do a uh, discussion about the bomb as the intermission. That's you. What the hell is that sound? <laughs> that's um, oh, but uh, all right, that's it for us. Thank you for watching. If you're on YouTube, just know that we stream this live at twitch.tv slash bash. Uh, Loki's done, so we won't be doing this at three in the morning, but uh, thank god. I guess what uh, I guess whenever the next uh, uh, what if comes out, we'll find out when we're gonna start watching that shit. I feel like what if so, since what since if. it's a what if thing, we can just do that at a normal time, not like right when it launches. Um, but we'll discuss. Nah, it. Nah, we gotta do it right when it launches. Right <laughs> what, what if Broly likes the end? What if Broly actually <laughs> likes something? <laughs> Well, well, see, I wanna... that's going to be the great thing about it is that it's it's just what if stories. We don't have to fucking speculate. Hey, just... hey where's this negativity? Where, what if Solara? I wanted an episode that what says what mean? if what if Brawly knew what the point was of the show at the end. Of the I, what, that's yeah. what I want to know. <laughs> I want to know. What if Brawly knew? Brawly what knew... Real I was gonna say that. <laughs> what, what, what? I hear you. What? <laughs> what if Brawly knew the meaning of betrayal? <laughs> 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 vocabulary.com oh, man, <laughs> well seriousness yeah like I'm, I'm pretty stoked to just listen to some stories or whatever how they however they show it just like and not have to worry about like oh is that gonna be in the future movie or whatever yeah. you know it's what like, if dude you don't know it's a what if that's the point it's a what if it's just one time that's you don't have to song. worry about it being canon. Well, the thing is, okay, hold on. <laughs> the thing is, oh, I, 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 did, hold on, I did see, I did read somewhere that um. Are you what if Ash ended, ended the stream right now? I know what I know, if right? <laughs> what if Ash ended this stream? I've, I it says um I, I read somewhere that someone said that what if will have some sort of influence on the MCU, but I don't know what. So something to keep an eye out for. But, all right, we're done. Sending off. Bye-bye. Good night, everybody. Later. GG's.
What if? <laughs> You're dumb. <laughs> <laughs>